Good afternoon, I'm Travis Ross with Pacific Safety Solutions. Today we're going to talk about rescues, uh, the equipment that we have available, the equipment that's available out there. Uh, we're going to talk about what the equipment that we have. All right, as you can see, in order to do a rescue, you need two ropes. You need your descent line and you need your vertical lifeline as a backup. As you can see here, we have our vertical lifeline. All right, we already have everything assembled and attached to the rope. We've got the anchor strap, we've got a carabiner attached to a terminator plate with the rope grab already attached to the rope to alleviate any confusion that you might have uh, in an emergency situation. The terminator plate basically just terminates the end of a rope. Now, if you don't have a terminator plate, you could simply tie a figure eight in the rope with the stopper knot around a thimble. This is adequate enough to terminate the end of a rope. Now on this side, we have the descent line. This is the rope that you're actually going to be descending off of. As you can see, we have it attached already. The anchor strap, carabiner, terminator plate, the ID, which stands for industrial descender. As you can see, we've already got the industrial descender already on the rope and attached and ready to go. Again, to alleviate any confusion, if you haven't used the ID in a while, uh, any confusion that you will have or may have in an emergency situation. So already having it on the rope is ideal. We got the spreader bar with our Greon positioning lanyard attached. Now, in a rescue situation, we actually use this as a pickoff strap to get all the weight off of the victim's lanyard onto ourselves. Now, if you don't use the Greon positioning lanyard, they do have pickoff straps. They do basically the same thing as the Greon does in a rescue situation. Now, once you get your system already uh, assembled and put together, you're going to take these uh, and set them back into the bag. All right, so that way, in an emergency situation, the guy gets stuck up there on the tower. You need to rescue him quickly. All right, so you already have everything attached. Now there's no confusion. Again, if you haven't used some of this equipment in a while, in an emergency situation, people have a tendency to go a little crazy and forget what they're doing or how to do it. So having all this stuff ready to go is ideal. Now we got your bags here. OSHA says that a rescue kit needs to be readily available. Uh, that doesn't mean it can be in the back of a truck or in the toolbox with tools on top of it. When the emergency happens, you're trying to find everything that you need. So having it ready to go is what OSHA says. Uh, they like to see it at the base of the tower, at least. Uh, you can even go the extra step. Uh, what I like to like to do is if my guy's up at the tower, at top of the tower, let's say he's up at 300 feet. My rescue ropes need to be at least 300 feet in order for me to get the, the victim down. Um, 300 feet of rope in each bag. Okay, so we got 300 feet of this 5 8 rope, vertical lifeline rope, and we've got 300 feet of our descent line. I don't know if you can calculate that, but that is approximately 60 to 70 pounds of rope that you're gonna to have to carry up with you 300 feet potentially uh, to get the victim down. That's quite a lot of weight to be climbing, especially in a high stress situation. Uh, what I like to do, my guy gets up there, my tower climber's up there. They usually, typically they would carry up a load line. Uh, the, that's the rope that the tower climber's up there. He drops it down the tower. You can attach tools to it, front sacks, waters, whatever he needs up at the top. Uh, the first thing I have him pull up are these two bags. That way, if I have to rescue this guy, uh, I'm not going to have to climb all the way up there with 60 to 70 pounds of weight attached to me. Uh, that's just something to think about uh, if you are the person designated to do the rescue. In this video you're about to watch, uh, we have all this stuff being in use. All right, you can, it's a demonstration of a rescue. I hope you enjoy it. The worker has just put the rescue kit together. He's inspecting it to make sure everything is there that he's going to need for a rescue. 
This is the descent line. As you can see, we've got the anchor strap, the terminator plate, the industrial descender already on the rope, attached to the spreader bar with the Grion positioning lanyard. Stuff it in the bag and set it at the base of the tower. Now along with this we need the vertical lifeline, which is the secondary. Got the anchor strap with the terminator plate with the rope grab already attached to the rope, so to alleviate any confusion that you may have in a high stress situation. Having it ready to go is ideal. An emergency has happened. All he has to do is attach the ropes to himself and ascend the tower. If the victim is hanging there and the victim is still conscious, the victim can use his positioning lanyard as a trauma strap. Hook both ends of the positioning lanyard to the hip D-rings and use it as a little step to put your feet in. What we're trying to do is avoid suspension trauma. Suspension trauma happens when a person is hanging too long in their harness. So having everything attached is ideal. Now the worker only needs to attach the anchor strap to the anchor point. And then attach his rope to the anchor strap. He can reach back. Connect the rope grab lanyard to his dorsal D-ring. Now OSHA says we're only allowed one connection per D-ring. So as soon as he attaches the rope grab lanyard, he disconnects his Y lanyard. Any time that can be saved is crucial in a rescue. You don't know how long your victim has until the victim either passes out or if the victim is already unconscious. Any steps you can take before the rescue needs to be done is ideal. Now on to the descent line. Same procedure. Wraps the anchor strap around the anchor point and attaches the rope to the anchor strap. Now he's ready to go, he descends down to the victim. The 
the worker is going to use his Grion positioning lanyard as a pickoff strap. He connects the Grion part of the positioner to the victim's dorsal D-ring, while the other end of the positioning lanyard is hooked to the bottom part of his spreader bar. As soon as he gets them connected, he pulls the tail of the positioning lanyard and pulls them up. He puts his foot on the victim's lanyard to push out in what's called force vectoring. Using his foot on his lanyard and pushing out, he's able to pick up the victim a lot easier. As soon as he gets him high enough, he can disconnect the victim's lanyard. Now all the weight is on his spreader bar. If you have the Farino carabiner, which is a horn on the carabiner right there, make sure you put the rope inside of that horn. It gives you more friction and a lot more control when you start descending down. You got a lot of extra weight, seeing as how you got two people on that descent line. Well, that concludes our rescue demonstration. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Once again, I'm Travis Ross with Pacific Safety Solutions. Have a great day. Climb safe.